Okay, so we are on lesson five. Uh, we're looking at transformations of functions, part three. Our learning goals for today include, we wanna be able to graph all functions given a horizontal stretch or compression and understand how the B value affects the graph. We want to be able to graph all functions given a horizontal stretch and compression in addition to all the other properties we have looked at so far. And lastly, we want to be able to rewrite functions in the form so that all the transformations are explicit. Let's take a look at some examples. Okay, so we begin this lesson with an investigation. We want to find out what the B value has on the, what effect the B value has on a quadratic function. Specifically, we want to look at the graph. So let's begin with the case over here of a B value equal to one. So this just happens to be our regular um, quadratic equation. Okay, so all we're doing is squaring the x values. So if I square negative 3, I end up with 9. Negative 2 gives me 4. Negative 1 gives me 1. Moving down, I get 0 here. I get 1 here. I get 4. And I get 9 once again. So if I were to graph this basic function, which you've probably done many times, I'm going to take my points and put them on this grid here. So let's see what we have. I have at 0, 0, 1 point, 1, 1, 2, 4, and 3, comma 9. So that brings me right here. Everything will become reflected in the y-axis. So really if I can graph one side, I can automatically graph the other. Steadily tracing out my parabola, I get something that looks like this. So there you have it, your base graph for quadratic. Now let's look at what happens when we multiply our B values by 2. So what's going on here? Well, I'll actually write it out. I'm going f of negative 2, so I'll write f negative 2 equals 2 times negative 2, and all of that is squared. What does that give me? Well, negative 2 times 2 gives me negative 4, and if I square that, I end up with 16. So I'll just write 16 right here. There you have it. Negative 1, well, to save space here, I'll just go 2 times negative 1 squared. That gives me 4. 0.5 will give me a value of 1. 0 stays the same. I still get 0. 0.5 gives me 1 again. 1 gives me 4. And 2 gives me, just like the first one, 16. Graphing these points, what do I have here? I have 0, 0, 0.5 and 1. So 0, 0.5 and 1 is over here. I have 1 and 4. So when I go across 1, I go up 4. Then I have 2 and 16, which is way up here. 2 and 16. Negative 2 and 16, same thing. And 1, negative 1 and 4, 0.5 and 1. And connecting my points. And there we go. So already we notice a difference. Okay, the 2 in front of the x made our parabola narrower. Or from another point of view, we've compressed it. Okay, think of like squeezing the original one together. Okay, let's look at our third example here. We're looking at one half for our B value, and I'm going to save space, just write in the negative eight in first. So I have one half times negative eight, and that's all squared. So this becomes negative 4 squared, which gives me 16. 
So again, to save space, I'll just write equals 16. If I have a negative four, dividing it by two, negative two squared gives me four. If I have a negative two, divided by two, squared gives me one, zero is still zero, and the rest looks the same. Four, sorry, that would be one, one, four, and 16. Bringing my points down to my graph, well, 8 brings me to 16, so 8, 16, let's see where that is, right about here. Eight sixteen, and I have 4 and 4, so 4 across 4, up 4. I have 2 and 1. me here 0 and 0 negative 2 and positive 1 negative 4 and positive 4 and finally I have negative 8 and 16 okay again carefully with your pen or pencil tracing out the points and my hands not too steady here I get something that looks like this. Again, I'm putting arrows on the end. What does that mean? Well, looks like if we divide our x value by a half, our parabola becomes wider, or you can think of it as being stretched horizontally. Okay, so let's summarize our findings here. Um, we'll Put a little text box. What do we know? Well, if say the b value is between 0 and 1, so 0 is less than or equal to b, and b is not less than or equal to, just say less than, um, is less than 1. Okay then we have a horizontal stretch. And I'll just take all this because it's pretty much the same. If B is, in this case, greater than 1, so I'll just switch this around, greater than 1, take all this zero business out of the way, then we have a horizontal compression.